Hi, I'm Graham. Welcome back to Man vs Film. I've got 10 fantastic movies for you to check out on Netflix US for the month of October 2019. Let's get started. Number 10, Slow West. 16-year-old Jay Cavendish as he goes on a journey from Scotland to America, travelling across the Wild West in an attempt to find his sweetheart, Rose Ross, who was forced to leave the country with her father. Following an accident, Jay meets the mysterious Silas Selick, and along the way, the two team up as they face the harsh environment and a band of bounty hunters. I really love Western movies. This 90 minute cracker has Michael Fassbender as one of the main characters and it's basically a, a, kind, a different kind of Western because they don't really travel through the typical landscapes that we've seen before. Very different things. It has this core of black humour that is just simply delightful to watch play out. And some of the things that happen are just terrific. Michael Fassbender, as always, is great. It's a really good story. It feels kind of measured in the way it's been thought out and told. And if you haven't watched Slow West, you're in for a treat. Number nine, All the Boys Love Mandy Lane. A beautiful 16-year-old temptress living in a small town in Texas. When Mandy is invited to a weekend party at a secluded ranch, all the boys competing for Mandy's affections. As night falls and drugs and alcohol take over, Mandy suddenly finds herself fighting for survival against one of the boys she has rejected. All the Boys Love Mandy Lane is a terrific horror movie, but the good thing about it is it feels like a high school drama at the start. It feels as if it's really spending some time with the characters, building them up, why people like or dislike each other, creating a kind of social structure, and then the second half turns into a straight on slasher movie. And this kind of ticked all the boxes I want. A slasher movie with blood and guts at display, but with characters that I was actually engaged with, you know, ones that I wanted to see survive. Some I didn't, but some I generally did. I love this movie, and if you haven't checked it out, this is a great flick for October. Number eight, All the President's Men. In the run-up to the 1972 elections, Washington Post reporter Bob Woodward covers what seems to be a minor break-in at the Democratic Party National Headquarters. He is surprised to find top lawyers already on the defence case and the discovery of names and addresses of Republican fund organisers. The editor of the Post is preparing to run with the story and assign Woodward and Carol Bernstein to it. They find the trail leading higher and higher in the Republican Party and eventually into the White House itself. Lots of movies have covered the Watergate scandal. Now for myself, the best one is All the President's Men. You get two amazing performances from Dustin Hoffman and Robert Redford, both on their A-game doing things that are just amazing. In this true life story, that is just fascinating to watch, primarily because of the two performances of the lead characters and the unravelling story. That is just a delight to see how everything is going to play out. Number seven, American Psycho. Patrick Bateman is handsome, well-educated and intelligent. He is 27 and living his own American dream. He works by day on Wall Street, earning a fortune to complement the one he was born with. At night, he descends into madness as he experiments with fear and violence. Christian Bale gave an outstanding performance as Patrick Bateman, a movie that I'm kind of torn on. Sometimes I watch it and I just find it's perfect. Other times I watch it and it gets a little bit too under my skin. There is terrific performances through the rest of the characters as well. It has immense quotable lines and it has this really great commentary on that kind of era and those kind of people that I think is just fascinating to watch. It's great. Well worth checking out. Number six, The Survivalist. In a kill or be killed world with starvation is rife and strangers are always dangerous. The survivalist lives off the grid and by his wits. When a starving woman and her teenage daughter discover the forest refuge, his loneliness drives him to overcome his suspicion and strikes a bargain with them in return for bed and board. But as desire becomes stronger than necessity, the exchange becomes an uneasy, ongoing arrangement which threatens not only his carefully constructed world, but also his life. The Survivalist is one of these indie movies that just marvels. So little really kind of happens. But you're really engaged with these three characters within this small location, wary of almost everything that's going on round about them, terrified by the least little noise, struggling to make food so that they can survive, and just this little piece of heaven that they've carved out. But of course, three is always a crowd, and watching these people start to distrust each other or try to worry what faction is going to try and overtake someone is always 
fascinating to watch. I think it's a great movie. Minimal dialogue, terrific looking, and it's a really quick, easy, interesting watch. Number five, The Last Exorcism. An evangelical minister who is having a crisis of faith agrees to let a documentary crew film the last exorcism he is going to deliver and how he fakes these processes. But this one's different from all the rest, as it seems that this girl is actually possessed and that he will have to rediscover his faith to battle this demon. Found footage movies can be hit or miss. They need to stick with the filming rules that they have within it. When they break them, that's when I can't really follow these movies. This one sticks to that fake documentary terrifically well. And I love the lead performance. It's the charismatic uh, delivery of lines of this character willing to sh pull back the curtain and show that what he does isn't real, but he is also struggling with his faith at the same time and manages to rediscover it through this horrific event that we're about to go into. And it is hairs on the back of the neck terrifying. A terrific performance by the perf the. the possessed girl who is just outstanding and has these strange body contortions that just, well, they're icky more than anything. The Last Exorcism is a terrific movie that is highly recommended. Number four, Avengement. Cain was in prison for someone else's crimes and for seven years he dreamed of his freedom. Every day he thought that would be the day he would be released and would take revenge on the offenders. Within the prison walls, he was beaten, bruised and battered every single day, turning his body into a brutal weapon until the day he got out where he could get revenge for the crimes put on him. I have said several times before, I'm not an apologist on this. I think Scott Adkins is creating some of the best direct-to-video action movies, well, ever. And I think this one, Avengement, is one of his better movies. It's got a great kind of story, nice the way it's edited. The fight scenes are really brutal and different and just entertaining. It's a nice, neat little story. It's not something that's going to last too long with you, but you'll have a great time while you're watching it. And sometimes, just sometimes, that's enough to save a movie. Avengement, I think, is just really fun if you're wanting your direct-to-video action fix. Here it is. Number three, The Spectacular Now. Charismatic, well-meaning and the life of the party, the kind-hearted high school senior Sutter Keeley makes great efforts to hide himself behind a carefree image and a jumbo fast food booze spiked soda cup. However, after a night of hard partying and an unpleasant breakup, Sutter will wake up in a random front yard again, where Amy Frankie, his bookish and unpopular classmate, finds him during their regular newspaper delivery route. Miles Taylor and Shailene Woodley star in this simply amazing movie that nobody talks about. Nobody seems to mention. It was a small hit when it came out on the indie circuit and never seemed to grow any further than that. And this is a marvellous movie of terrific performances about two people on kind of wrong and right paths that just kind of connect, share a moment in time. And whether that's going to be destructive or not, it is a defining moment in both of their lives. This is a wonderfully affecting movie that just is amazing that nobody talks about these days. Number two, Green Room. Punk rock band The Ain't Rights are travelling across country on a tour. Unfortunately for them, their tour eventually turns into something very nasty when they are witnesses to a crime scene. Since the notorious club owner, Darcy Banker, is now on the case of the incident, The Ain't Rights start to work together to try and escape the club alive and make it back to Washington DC before Darcy finds them first. An extremely tense movie. This is one of those ones that at the start you're kind of wondering where it's going to go and before you realise that you're stuck in this horrible situation with these characters that you've kind of grown to love and you just, you know things aren't going to end well. There's no way it can happen. and They end up in a neo-Nazi camp. There are armed men, there are dogs that will tear them apart, there are large groups of people that they just can't avoid and they've seen something that they just shouldn't have seen. And it's bloody, it's terrifying, it's tense, it's full of suspense and this gets right under your skin. It is a marvellous movie, extremely well done with a level of atmosphere that rarely have I seen done before. This is a movie that I just think is terrific, one of the best ones I've seen this decade that is just super effective and really well done. Number one, The Invitation. Will and Eden were once a loving couple. After a tragedy took their son, Eden disappeared. Two years later, out of the blue, she returns with a new husband and is a different person. 
eerily changed and eager to reunite with her ex who she left behind. Over the course of a dinner party in the house that was once his, the haunted will is gripped by mounting evidence that Eden and her new friends have a mysterious and terrifying agenda. But can we trust Will's hold on reality? Or will he be the unwitting catalyst of doom he senses? I think the invitation is terrific. One of the best things about it is the, the main character. We don't know if he is still in a grieving period and is seeing things that he is reading wrong ideas into or whether his ex-wife is actually doing something that seems a little bit ominous, a little bit mysterious and against the nature of what Will deems is right. And that's where the movie plays for long periods of the time is he having a breakdown? Is he not coping with seeing his wife and getting these flooding memories back to him? Or is there something going on? It's terrifically well staged, all in this kind of one house as they work together to try and save Will, who seems to be going down this black hole, as they try to reconnect this group of friends that they once were. But it's really well done. I think Invitation is a terrific movie, and I hope you check this one out. So there we have it, 10 terrific movies for you to check out this October. Hope you find something there that you want to watch. Uh, if you feel that I've missed something off my list, let me know in the comment box or just any thoughts about this list at all uh, and I'll get back to you. And I'll see you next time on Man vs Film.